Hello, this is I Go Travel with Don Barnett. There's a place in South Dakota called the Black Hills. The uh, Lakota Sioux Indians call them Pahasapa because the pine-covered mountains gave them a black silhouette uh, that rose high above the surrounding plains. Dynamite and jackhammers over 14 years sculptured four American presidents on the cliffs of the mountain, a mountain that was uh, once held sacred by the Lakota Sioux. But ever since George Custer, who was to, de to die a few years later with all of the 7th Cavalry on the banks of a little creek called the Little Big Horn, about a five-hour drive today northwest in Montana. But after he reported gold in the Black Hills, not even the army could keep away hordes of crazy gold seekers from the Black Hills. The Indian Treaty meant nothing and was eventually revoked. Uh, Indians were out and the Black Hills uh, was turned into the destination for tourists that it is today. Uh, two million a year come to see the presidents on the cliff alone. I saw this poster and it says on the bottom uh, uh, that Indian people have battled terrorism ever since Columbus set forth in the New World in 1492. The vicious, uh, brutal, uh, uh, unforgiving war against American Indians uh, by the U.S. military ended about 1875 in the area between the Black Hills here and Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is about uh, 800 kilometers west of the Black Hills. Incidentally, uh, the Black Hills is quite a large area, about two and a half times larger than Yellowstone National Park. And uh, the Black Hills has several towns and small cities in the area. Hey, where are they going? They're off to Sturgis, Black Hills, South Dakota, an annual event, the greatest motorcycle rally in the world come rain or shine. I had a couple of uh, bikes over the years uh, but I never did make it uh, to Sturgis. But back in the day, you know in the early days, uh, things were getting pretty wild uh, in the town and the, the town council had a lot of complaints about uh, naked uh, people, naked women riding those big motorcycles through town for a week at a time and some people were offended by it. So town council felt that they had to pass a bylaw regarding nudity, and they did. And they said that some part of the uh, woman's breasts had to be covered. Well, the ladies uh, bought some of that kind of uh, uh, skin paint, the kind of fingernail paint, but skin paint, and uh, those little eyebrow uh, uh, brushes, and uh, painted part of their breasts to cover them up. And they painted the nipples only. And they obeyed the law. And they got on their motorcycles. And they rode through town. And everybody was happy. And the police uh, came out in droves. There wasn't a single uh, report of a policeman reporting in sick in those days. For not even a single day. They were there on the streets to see that the ladies were obeying the law. Uh, the motorcycle rally in the Black Hills uh, really got started after World War II. Uh, returning vets were restless and mentally scarred up uh, from the war. And uh, motorcycle riding became a form of therapy for many. I remember uh, back in the day when I was riding uh, uh, popular at that time it was these uh, uh, these big bubbles that came over uh, your your face and they came out quite far and uh, I remember the first time I was going to uh, you know a hundred kilometers an hour or so and uh, I saw something in the field as I, I went by and uh, I of course turned my head to look and the wind hit the side of that bubble and, and nearly took my neck off so uh, we never wore those bubbles uh, for very long but I remember many times coming home and uh, looking in the mirror and uh, you know how the bugs uh, get uh, mashed on the front of your car or truck? Well, my face was like that. I had bugs in my beard that uh, I had to scrape out uh, with uh, some difficulty. And uh, uh, even at times I've had bugs smeared into my teeth, just like the front of a car. 
Motorcycles are all over the world these days. Uh, the largest number of bikes are in India and China. The motorcycle replaced the horse in military and police operations. I owned a, a, a British uh, Triumph 750 at one time. When we had our bikes, uh, uh, the head of the Motor Association made uh, a comment, uh, something to the effect that 99% uh, of the drivers are safe, uh, courteous, and kind. And uh, we therefore called our bike group the one percenters. But the big names include uh, the German BMW and Asian bikes like uh, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Honda, and many, many others. But the king in America, and for me, is the old Indian bikes and the Harley. Of uh, course, you know, there is uh, some added danger when you're riding a bike. But uh, I'm telling you, it's that sense of uh, freedom and, and the wind blowing in your face and uh, in, in the outdoors and, and moving right along. That sense of freedom is uh, unparalleled. You'll have to go a long ways to have a, a greater feel of freedom than when you're on a bike rolling on down the highway. Deadwood is another uh, small city in the Black Hills where you can play poker uh, and uh, watch an old-fashioned uh, uh, western gunfight. It was where a uh, famous legendary lawman, gunfighter, and card player Wild Bill Hickok and his girlfriend Calamity Jane hung out for a while. This is uh, a royal flush in poker. Uh, a mighty good uh, kind of hand and you might think about putting some money and betting on it. Uh, while playing poker, Wild Bill was gunned down. Uh, the poker hand he was holding became known as a dead man's hand, and it contained two black eights and two black aces. And no one knows for sure what the fifth uh, card was that he held uh, when he was killed. There's a uh, Custer State Park nearby, and we stopped in there on the day that they uh, rounded up all of the buffalo to vaccinate them uh, from anthrax. And it was quite a show and a great uh, public event. On the way out to the state park early in the morning, we had to slow down a couple of times uh, because a few uh, stray buffalo were crossing the roads. The map shows the range of uh, the buffalo prior to the coming of uh, masses of white settlers and uh, guns. It, they covered much of uh, North America. After 1870, look at the light brown color, limited to a couple of areas in the north here and in the south in the U.S. But after 18. Uh, 70, look at 1880, 10 years, limited to a few little little spots here and there. And today, uh, bison are uh, limited to uh, uh, parks, and uh, some uh, a few are raised domestically on farms and ranches. We sat on a big uh, side hill here uh, for a perfect view of the roundup. Uh, some half tons and jeeps were used but most of the job was done by horse riders. Uh, with the mastodons long gone, the buffalo is now the largest mammal in North America. They tend to be a bit uh, jumpy or skitterish, and that is why early Indian hunters uh, were able to scare and chase them over cliffs or into large corral structures called pounds. The, the Cree chief, uh, Poundmaker, was so called because he was so skillful and knowledgeable in building pounds into which the buffalo could be chased. Uh, this buffalo strayed from the herd, so two horse riders uh, went to bring him back. But Mr. Buffalo took off uh, for those green hills in the distance. The buffalo outran the horses because an hour or so later, the horse riders returned with no buffalo. It took most of the morning, uh, but the buffalo were eventually chased into corrals uh, where they uh, could be vaccinated. Buffalo ranching requires high fences, as some buffalo can jump almost two meters from a standstill. A herd instinct is extremely strong, 
and uh, an isolated buffalo will tear down a fence just to get back to the herd. Whether that herd is uh, other buffalo or cattle or horses, uh, sheep or goats, separation of any kind causes panic. Uh, an isolated buffalo is unhappy and agitated. Uh, but buffalo can uh, live on marginal range that would starve cattle. They have poor eyesight, but a strong sense of both smell and hearing. Uh, one indicator that a buffalo is at ease is if its tail is down. But uh, if that tail gets put up in the air, look out. That animal is ready to charge. Uh, driving around, uh, we were interrupted uh, by these descendants from the old mining days who loved uh, treats like carrots. Love those tourists. Uh, lots of uh, prairie dogs or gophers. Uh, they are extensive tunnelers. And the ranchers don't like them because a horse can uh, step into one of their holes uh, and uh, injure or, or break a leg. Uh, they have uh, three litters per year. Uh, with uh, five or six youngsters in each litter. And they're near the bottom of the uh, food chain, and they supply coyotes, hawks, foxes, and bobcats with essential food. Uh, people have uh, resorted to poisoning them at times, uh, but uh, poison kills innocent animals that either eat the poison directly or eat the poison to go for carcasses. We also saw a few herds of uh, pronghorns, fastest animal in the West, at over 50 kilometers per hour over a distance, and almost 70 kilometers per hour uh, on a short span. Uh, they are not jumpers and will try to crawl under a fence, causing a movement recently uh, to replace the lower strand of barbed wire in the fence with a barbless strand of wire. We just had to ride this good uh, bike trail that they've got down here. At our age, uh, we look for easy bike trails and the 175 kilometer long Mickelson Trail fit the bill. The rail line hauled uh, people, freight, uh, mail and the livestock for nearly a hundred years before being converted to South Dakota's first rails to trails project. Uh, you can bike uh, it, uh, ride horses on it, uh, jog and walk it. And uh, if uh, there is enough snow in winter, uh, you can ski and snowmobile some parts. It runs through uh, a variety of uh, the Great Plains, the prairies, the woodlands, meadows and forest. Uh, we bike through four tunnels over a hundred bridges. There are uh, something like 15 trailheads along the route, uh, many with parking areas, toilets, and uh, picnic tables. We are looking for uh, some big uh, mammoth uh, excavation site uh, that uh, they've uh, found down here somewhere in the Black Hills. Here is the sign here that we're looking for. Uh, this world-renowned mammoth site is the largest research facility on mammoths in the world. It was discovered when they were uh, clearing land for a town subdivision and the blade of a bulldozer uncovered a giant mammoth tusk. Uh, look at the stairs in the foreground and the tourists standing in the background. This was a big site. No dinosaurs have been found at this site. Only warm-blooded animals thousands of years ago and thousands of years after the dinosaurs. The mammoths uh, uh, that died here were not fossilized. A fossilized creature is one in which a chemical reaction has occurred and it turns the fleshy carcass into stone. For example, the skeletons of dinosaurs were fossilized. However, not so with these mammoths. I heard that at one time, uh, a slice of meat was sliced off of a mammoth carcass, and it was possible to actually cook and eat it. Remains of other animals uh, were found in the sinkhole. This is an artist's perception 
of animals that might have roamed uh, these plains in prehistoric times. Uh, scientists uh, speculate that the mastodons uh, descended into the deep water hole for a drink of water, or maybe just to cool off. But they were big animals, and they were cumbersome, and they were unable to get back up again out of the sinkhole, and they died there. And that happened century after century after century. And that's why it was such a great archaeological find today. Compare the size of the mammoths to those of the people. Another interesting thing is that they found only young male mammoths at this site. The mammoths were all young, uh, about uh, 15 to 30 years old. Now, normally uh, mammoths uh, will live to be 60 to 80 years of age. Uh, compare uh, the arm size of a human uh, to the front leg of a mammoth. Now back to that uh, question of why they found only male mammoths in the drinking hole, uh, scientists speculate that uh, young males often ran around together and were more inclined to take risks than uh, were females. The Black Hills is a pretty big place to see. And uh, there's some places that we did not see. There's some badlands just out of town that's w certainly worthwhile seeing apparently. And uh, uh, there's a missile uh, museum in uh, Rapid City uh, at one time, they built over a thousand uh, missile sites here and buried them deep in the ground. Uh, I knew a fellow who worked on that project, and uh, he said that they had to send a new crew out every morning uh, to clear out the rattlesnakes that all crawled down into those uh, deep silos in the ground before the regular crew could go to work. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, monument uh, to uh, the uh, Sioux chief... Uh, Crazy Horse has been going on for 25 or 30 years. It's a work in progress. And uh, I don't know if it's a tourist trap or not. But anyway, we did not go there. It'll take another 25 or 30 years, they say, to finish it. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we've got to get rolling on down the road. If you want to see more videos, like it says here, uh, just Google... Uh at uh, Don Barnett 5090, uh, hit the playlist and scroll down. Uh, videos are, are in every playlist. Uh, hit the subscribe button and that'll tell you when we're posting more videos. Until then, uh, adios for now. We're rolling on down the road.